My name is Gustavo Flores Macias. I'm on faculty in the government department. I'm an associate professor there, and I'm also serving as associate vice provost for international affairs at Cornell. In a way, we've watched this movie before with a 2008-2009 global recession. It's just that that movie was playing out very slowly, and we have a little bit of a, a compressed movie here. Everything is just exploding. Um, so we don't know exactly what the consequences will be in terms of poverty, but we know that back then in the 08-09 recession, millions of people fell below the poverty line. Um, and we can expect the same to happen this time around. So we will see um, a country that is much poorer on the other side of the COVID-19 crisis. On the, regarding inequality, um, inequality will be affected uh, incredibly by COVID-19. We know that this blow will be much harsher, much more severe for some sectors of the population, for the, the poorer echelons of society. And we know that inequality had been growing over time in the U.S., even before the crisis. And um, the 2008-2009 recession uh, did exactly what I'm describing. The, the poorer session, sectors of society um, had a very hard time bouncing back, and it took the country many, many years, about a decade, to get back to where it was before that crisis. And we can expect the same to happen, but probably much worse. So on the other side of COVID-19, we're likely to see a much poorer country in terms of more population, more, um, more people below the poverty line, and a much more unequal society. I think uh, in the field of political science, everybody right now is thinking about the political, economic, social consequences of the pandemic. Um, if one, for example, is studying civil military relations, now people are thinking with the militaries coming in to say enforce the lockdowns in many, many countries. What does that do for civil military relations? Are militaries here to stay? Are people more likely to want the involvement of militaries? And this is just one example out of many in which um, COVID has, taught so, has touched so many aspects of life that uh, we'll see people just obsessed. You know, in the courses that we're teaching right now, it is hard not to relate to uh, COVID on every possible topic. I teach a course on inference, and this course helps students uh, come up with research designs that help them uncover relations of causality. So what is causing something else? And the COVID experience has been uh, amazing in terms of the challenges for uh, inference and how to know, how do we know that let's say a vaccine might be working? How do we know that a particular public policy might be helping? And these types of things are, I think, um, just very interesting when we are able to relate to COVID and students can um, understand just firsthand what is going on. And, and I think that this is going to stay with us for quite, quite a while. I think that the pandemic, at least personally, um, has brought out so many wonderful things about people. And it's been an opportunity to maybe reflect on you pause and reflect on how we relate to others and, and the things that we miss about these interactions in person. Um, I have been amazed by how resourceful people have been, you know, students, faculty, uh, but it, it has definitely been very challenging. I think this, this pandemic in a way has both highlighted the, the fragility of um, just sort of human life and, and society on the one hand, but also for me, it has highlighted the importance of looking for solutions that are more, I don't know if global is the right term, but solutions that require even more collaboration across borders and, and not less, sort of this trend of retrenchment toward uh, national identities and, and you know, building walls. I think what we need is exactly the opposite. We need just more cooperation and more reaching across and seeing what other people are doing and how can we help tackle these, these global challenges. And COVID has really highlighted that uh, for me very personally. I, I just wanna encourage people to stay uh, positive and stay focused and, and know that um, these crises tend to make society more resilient. And I think that's something that I personally uh, take solace in and, and look forward to seeing what uh, society might be like on the other side.